Hey guys, Roxxon Box 90 here with some more Dragon's May spoilers. I know they just keep feeding us these, but really exciting. So we have three tonight that have been posted. We have two Mythics and a reprint. So let's go to the reprint first. We have Putrefy, which is one, a black and a green instant speed, destroy artifact or creature. It can't be regenerated for those who don't know. I think it was originally printed in the old Ravnica block. It's a very versatile spot removal, and we haven't had a really solid one in a while outside of the charms, so I'm very happy they brought it back, and of course, its junk is fairly well used. I'm sure this will see play, at least as a sideboard card. So thank you for that, wizards. Next, we have Voice of Resurgence, which is, whoa, holy cow. Interesting artwork. It's a green and a white for a 2-2 elemental. Whenever an opponent casts a spell during your turn or when it dies, put a green white element uh, elemental creature token with battlefield with this creature's power number is equal to the number of creatures you control wow this there's a bunch of things this is good for and it's just it's really powerful okay so first off it's two for two two which is really solid and easily constructed costed it's non-legendary which means that you can run a bunch of them in a deck and you probably will want to run a couple of them at least the fact that it's when your opponent casts a spell during your turn or when it dies, so potentially if someone casts a spell during your turn to kill it, instant speed removal is not unheard of, then you get two guys for the cost of him dying, and at the, if they have one creature, there's at least one. Uh, there will be at least one one, and probably bigger. It also is just a generator, because anybody wants to draw spells on your turn, you get a dude. Anybody wants to, you know do any sort of manipulation of the field, they want to control magic, it just helps you. It's pretty nice. And of course when it dies, and if you have a couple of them, you know, it's just raw value. It's just gonna give you lots of guys and they you know, in aggro, I mean most Naya decks and any in fact any form of aggro decks that would run with this card, you're just gonna get lots and lots of guys. So just wow. I'm sure there's more stuff to it, but that's that's my initial impression of it. So I'm almost positive this is going to be constructed playable and constructed used. It'll probably be a solid money card because you can actually run them. You, unlike some of the legendaries where you're probably not going to run more than a couple, this one will likely see three, maybe four in a deck. And it's it's just really good. In EDH, it's going to go into most token-generating decks. So that's really nice. And we have Azorius, and of course they keep giving us good Azorius cards. Come on, Wizards. It's kind of not fair making Azorius ridiculous. They already have guys to St. Traft. So anyway, Castle of the Absolute. It's two white and a blue for a 2-4 human advisor. As it enters the battlefield, name a card other than a creature or a land, and your opponent can't cast cards with the chosen name. Spells with the chosen name you cast cost two less to cast. Holy crap. I've, I, I'm at a loss. It's just not fair they're giving Azorius the best cards in this set. It's just ridiculous. So yeah, basically you play it, you lock out a card from them as long as it's in play. That's not a creature or a land, but come on, that means planeswalkers or artifacts, enchantments, all seem quite normal. And don't forget this also includes instants and sorceries that have a name. It's really just creature and land. So it locks down that card entirely. You can't flash anything back. And you also can prevent the Planeswalkers from being used. The fact that it also allows you to play the same card for less, given that decks tend to be three colors now, and there are a lot of overlap of cards, <coughs> Thrag Tusk, <coughs> then I'm sure this is going to be a game tuner, turner card. Just think about it. Council of Absolute, turn four. You lock down Thrag Tusk, you play yours for even less, and you have extra mana next turn to do other stuff. That's just off the top of my head. Really, really powerful. I'm sure in EDH as well, it's going to be very good for stacks. I can see this going into Grand Arbiter or Lavinia if you're running her. Any stacks deck that runs blue-white in EDH will probably see this card being used. So very constructed playable, I think. Very EDH playable. Limited, of course, as with many of the Mythics in the set, is really good. So those are the three cards. That have been spoiled, let me know what you guys think about them, especially Voice of Resurgence and Council of the Absolute, as they have interesting abilities. And post that down below in the comment section. Also check out my channel sponsors in the description. As always, guys, stay tuned for more Magic spoilers and more Magic Gathering content. Roxbox90 signing up. I'll see you guys next time.